Aloha and happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Ianju Denise here on this wet and rainy Friday morning. Uh, we're so thankful for all of you for tuning in here. Of course, we join you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with the newsmakers and policymakers here in our state to talk about a variety of topics that are impacting our islands. And today, Yanji, we have the governor joining us once again. That's right, and we've got a lot to talk about. He's laid out his state of the state, and we want to dive into what he said in the speech. Good morning, Governor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let's talk about what you laid out uh, in your in your state of the state address. Tell us what is Hawaii 2.0. It really is uh, an effort to try and get the community together and engage, you know, business, um, labor, uh, government, uh, to really talk about what Hawaii uh, 2.0 should look like. I mean, I think, you know, Yanji, we've learned a lot of lessons from this pandemic. Um, you know, it highlighted some things. It really uh, reinforced how important technology um broadband access to everyone, you know, as everyone's gone into telehealth, uh, working from home, um, as we've gone to online learning in public schools, I think we've really seen um, how important being connected is uh, te technologically. And I think most importantly, we've seen that uh, for those in our community who don't have broadband access, they're really at a disadvantage and not able to get to uh, important services. So Hawaii 2.0 is really looking at trying to bring the community together, uh, look at, uh, you know, we have a lot of um, strategic plans for uh, affordable housing, for child care, for economic development. We want to just, um, you know, revisit the most current plans, uh, put on the pandemic lens and look at the lessons learned, and then really identify key priorities for action that will position Hawaii to come out a stronger and more resilient um, as we um, get through this pandemic. You know, throughout the state of the state, there were many who were looking for some specifics in terms of what you plan to outline to help to fill the budget deficit and the gap that is projected because of the impacts of COVID-19 on our economy. Uh, can you give us a little uh, more outline of, or more specifics, if you will, about some of the things that you're looking to introduce in the legislation to the legislature this year, specifically targeting uh, the economy and efforts to help to fill the gap of the state budget? Well, I mean, I think, Ryan, the most immediate um, has to be uh, bringing back our visitor industry. You know, there's just not anything in uh, the Hawaii economy that can uh, have more immediate impact on getting people back to work. The other real big initiative is about um, construction of infrastructure, uh, you know, state investments in uh, public schools, in public facilities. You know, we the budget does include uh, more than a billion dollars in transportation projects, uh, harbors, highways, uh, and airports. Uh, you know, that's the second most important thing that the state can do is really get shovel-ready projects, um, get them out into the, the community so that we can get our construction industry really going and um, getting people back to work. We're getting a lot of questions this morning about unemployment benefits. I know there have been some issues with the mainframe when we had Ann Pereira Eustaquio on here in the past. She just talked about how, you know, they're working off a really old mainframe and doing the best they can, but but trying not to um, add too many changes there or, or do them in slow steps. Um, but that, of course, uh, has led to a delay in the benefits. What can you tell folks about how soon they can expect to actually receive some of those benefits? Yeah, I think, Yanji, that's the biggest and most frustrating thing. I think we all recognize, you know, just to give people a perspective, um, when I was an engineering student at the University of Hawaii, a long, long time ago, I learned to COBOL, uh, program in COBOL. Nobody learns to co uh, program in COBOL, and that's, um, that's the programming language that uh, the UI system uses. Um, uh, it's been really difficult all across the country um, just because, you know, the UI is a federal program and um, all of us depend on uh, software that is way too old and it's been difficult. The other part and the other big challenge I know that uh, many who are un unemployed are faced is that 
each one of these um, become a new program. And even though someone might have been uh, receiving benefits, they have to re-qualify on the new program uh, every time. So we're again going back to have to have people apply, um, get certified before they can begin to receive benefits. So I know that it's frustrating on a lot of different fronts. It really is frustrating for us as well. We would want to be able to provide more seamless service, uh, but because of the antiquated system and because of the federal requirements, you know, there are just things that we can't get around. And, and so at this point in time, do, is there a, a projected timeline? Because we know that this, of course, was signed by President Trump then at the at the end of last year, and we were hitting into February, and we know that there's still, it's been a month now since they've been able to get this in order. Is there a projected timeline or time frame on when they predict that this might be up and running again. Uh, and in addition to that, if there is another extension of this going into the future, uh, is that something that we'll also have to take into consideration? Is this lag once again because of the mainframe and adding an entire new system? Should another wave of CARES Act funding come through? I think part of it, Ryan, will depend on how the Congress implements it. You know, all of these are identified as new programs. And so it does require us to have people once again apply and then we have to certify that they're eligible. You know, um, if the Congress would just extend the existing program, then we wouldn't have to um, have people reapply and, and determine eligibility. So a lot of it will be dependent on how the Congress writes the le legislation. You know, I'm sorry, I don't have a specific um, date. I can uh, get back to you guys on uh, when they anticipate being able to uh, deliver the first um, checks that um, are the result of uh, the additional aid provided. We're also getting some questions this morning about marijuana. There have been some uh, proposals in the, on the legislative side to legalize marijuana. I know in the past that's something that you have not supported, um, but it would create a, a good amount of tax revenue when we definitely need it most. Have you changed your thinking on that at all? You know, we are definitely um, full speed ahead on industrial hemp. As you know, the, the federal government uh, has provided a process so that we can begin um, to uh, ramp up on uh, industrial hemp production. Uh, you know, the challenge, Yanji, is that it's still elite. Marijuana is still uh, a Schedule I uh, substance that is um, closely regulated by the federal government. And um, I know that uh, other states have gone to a recreational. Uh, no one has, uh, or I'm not aware of any state really legalizing um, marijuana. And so, uh, you know, it, it's a challenge because um, it's still illegal by federal standards. And unlike other states where you can just drive across uh, state state boundaries and get into another state, you know, everyone coming to Hawaii has to cross a federal boundary and uh, they may not be aware, but if they uh, do have marijuana and they, you know, are crossing that boundary, it can um, have really, really um, negative impact. So I think we want to be um, careful. I certainly support the Congress taking action to legalize marijuana across the country. Uh, and until uh, that happens, it's very difficult for a state to, uh, in my opinion, allow it to happen. I want to switch gears here and I'll talk about the vaccine. We know that the rollout has been uh, successful to some degree. I mean, people are getting it right now, uh, but maybe not to the level in which many thought that would be, we would be at and the number that we would be at come this time in, in January 2021. What are your thoughts on just the process right now and, and what you're hearing from the federal government in terms of the availability of the vaccine for the states? Yeah, you know, Ryan, um, it um, the availability of the vaccine has really been the biggest um, challenge for us. Um, we are not getting as much vaccine as we would want to get. You know, right now, um, the Department of Health has done a good job of uh, certifying and expanding the number of uh, organizations and facilities that can actually administer the vaccine. You know, we're, we're up to now over 50 facilities statewide 
Um, you know, most hospitals are able to administer vaccines. Uh, all of the federally qualified uh, community health centers, we're, we're trying to make sure that they all get certified and able to distribute vaccines. Uh, a lot of the um, health uh, clinics are also able to do that. Uh, so we have built the capacity so that we can administer more than 50,000 uh, doses a week if we could get them. Unfortunately, we're only getting 20,000 or so. Um, and that's been um, the biggest part of, of our frustration uh, with the vaccine rollout. Um, you know, as you know, we stood up and opened uh, the vaccination center at Pier, Pier 2. Uh, and we've uh, started vaccinations at Blaisdell Center. Uh, as I said, all of the um, community health centers are, are getting vaccine. You know, people have this impression that the, sit, the state is holding a lot of vaccine. We are direct shipping to each of these um, points of this uh, disposition uh, the vaccine directly, and the state is not um, sitting on a whole lot of vaccine, we are very efficiently getting it out to those who can um, put shots in arms. And, um, you know, I know when I checked the statistics uh, yesterday, we were over 120,000 uh, doses administered. Uh, it was about 70% of what we've received. Uh, and we are administering the vaccine in most instances uh, within seven days of receiving it. So, you know, the real bottleneck, uh, Ryan, right now, and what would really help us is just getting more vaccine. We could probably do three times as much vaccine as we're currently receiving, uh, and that would really make a huge difference. I know that the Biden administration has said they're going to ramp up distribution. When do you actually, you know, have they given you any time frame in terms of when you can actually expect to see more than the roughly 30,000 that we're getting per week? Well, they had said that this week would start at least um, the process of expanded um, vaccine distribution, and it, it's not that significant an increase. And, you know, that has been what's frustrating. I know that you've seen uh, reports that FEMA wants to uh, open uh, mass vaccination centers across the country. And, you know, for us here in Hawaii, that wouldn't be helpful. What we need is more vaccine. Uh, as I said, we probably could administer three times of the vaccine that we're getting right now. Uh, we have more than ample capacity to, uh, to put shots in arms. What we need most is more vaccine. And how will the vaccines and, and its role in, in our community and throughout the country, how will that impact the Safe Travels program? Do you plan to implement any changes to that un, under the current system that, of course, requires the testing and, if not, the 10-day quarantine period? How will the vaccines impact the overall Safe Travels program here in Hawaii? Well, it's, it's a couple of things, Ryan. We definitely, just from a quarantine perspective, uh, I know the Department of Health is uh, working on guidance about, you know, if you are vaccinated, uh, what does that mean? Should you be exposed to someone who, um, who has the virus or have come into close contact? So, you know, we should be providing guidance uh, to doctors about how uh, those who are vaccinated should be treated. Um, we are definitely working with the CDC. Um, I did uh, have a call with the White House um, COVID team on Tuesday, uh, and I did ask them to put a priority uh, with the CDC on more guidance uh, for travel. You know, are those who are vaccinated, uh, you know, the, the scientific question is whether they can carry and uh, get other people uh, infected with the virus, even if they are not susceptible uh, to getting sick with the coronavirus. I think that's the fundamental question. If those who are vaccinated don't spread the virus, then clearly we could welcome them back as part of the Safe Travels program. But until we get specific guidance from the CDC, it's uh, really hard for us uh, to know how we should treat uh, those who are vaccinated who might be traveling to the islands. Uh, we're getting some questions. Uh, this one from Sean, are, are they going to do rental and mortgage assistance again? And then there was another one a little farther down asking about uh, the restaurant debit cards. Are you anticipating do any, doing more of these sort of direct payment programs? I know the state is facing 
um, some major financial challenges, but uh, a lot of residents are asking about that in the comments this morning. Yeah, just a couple of things, Yanji. For sure, the federal um, aid package that was passed at the end of last year in December has additional uh, aid for rent and mortgage relief. And we're in the process. We haven't received those funds yet, uh, but we are in the process of uh, working with the counties to um, to get that money out into the community as quickly as we can. Now, one significant change, I think, for those uh, who may have participated in the program before, you know, we still, as a priority, want to get the money to the landlords directly so we can make sure that the rent is paid. Um, the new uh, legislation says that if the landlord refuses to accept uh, the payments uh, from the government, uh, then we can provide that money uh, directly to uh, the renter. Uh, and I know that that was a concern uh, with the last round of funds that we have, and that is a significant change um, from the federal government. We know recently that there was also a variant, a, form, a different form of a variant that was found here in Hawaii. Can you give us any update on what the Department of Health has found in this new variant here in our islands, and how concerned should residents be about that? Um, just a couple of things, Ryan. I, I want to emphasize uh, with the public that, you know, the state laboratory here in Hawaii was one of the very first um, uh, certified to test for coronavirus. And they really have been on the cutting edge of, uh, of surveillance testing and keeping track of these vir uh, variants. They have been testing for variants uh, since uh, early in the summer. So I just want uh, everyone to know that we are looking out for these variants. Uh, a couple things from the call with the White House, the three uh, most talked about variants, uh, the UK variant, uh, the variant from South Africa, uh, and the variant from Brazil. Uh, for the UK variant, uh, it's been found in 24 states at this point in time, not found in Hawaii yet. Um, the variant from South Africa uh, has not been found in uh, any state in the U.S. at this point, and obviously not found here in Hawaii. Uh, and the third variant that they're uh, concerned about, the one from Brazil, uh, they found one case in Minnesota. They believe that that's the index case, as, as they would say in uh, epidemiology. Uh, and they definitely are working really hard to make sure that, that they can... Uh, do all the contact tracing and make sure that uh, there's no one else exposed to that variant and we can contain it. Uh, the variant found here in Hawaii, um, I just spoke with um, Libby Char yesterday. Um, they believe that it's um, um, coming from California. The, most of the cases have um, been found in uh, California. There are five or six other states that have reported the same variant. And so our Department of Health is talking with uh, the other departments in these states. You know, they don't um, see any uh, real uh, different characteristics of this variant uh, at this point in time. So it doesn't appear to be any more contagious uh, than um, the uh, regular coronavirus. Um, and they certainly don't have enough uh, information to know whether it is, uh, you know, causes more uh, severe uh, illness. So, um, you know, we continue to monitor. We're trying to get as much information as we can, and we definitely will be sharing that uh, information with the public as we get it. We had Mayor Blangiardi on here uh, on Wednesday, and he said that one of the things he's looking at with the tier system is potentially tweaking it, not getting rid of it, but perhaps allowing for some loosening of the restrictions on things like team sports for youth, and also perhaps allowing more bars to open because obviously they've been closed for months now and a lot of them uh, are losing their business. He said that he would not take action like that without working in concert with the state. What are your thoughts on that? Um, do you think that it, it would be appropriate to loosen those kinds of restrictions? He said he wants to do that perhaps as early as next month. You know, a couple of things, Yanji. We are seeing a reduction in the, the number of cases that we're seeing, and that's really terrific news. Just want to thank everyone for doing their part and, you know, maintaining social distance, uh, wearing their masks and washing their hands. It really does make a difference. Uh, yes, I've had uh, several conversations with uh, Mayor Blangiardi, and we're working together. 
you know, he's, um, you know, he's kind of come on board and he's, we're trying to get him up to speed uh, as quickly as we can. We've had discussions about um, the, the tier system and, you know, the whole notion that we want to, uh, if there's a lot of virus activity, we want to be more restrictive. Uh, if there's less virus activity, then we can uh, relax them. I think uh, also important is that we really want to be focused on um, the activity that spreads the virus. So I think uh, both of us are trying to look at uh, the cluster reports that the Department of Health is issuing, we're trying to drill down and look at uh, what are the, where is the virus being spread, what kinds of activities and what kind of businesses uh, are more likely to spread the virus and really being focused on can we do mitigation within those businesses that re reduces the spread of the virus or can we um, come up with other ways so that they can continue to operate um, without having to shut them down. So, you know, we're, we're committed to, I think, the same objective. You know, we want to keep um, the public health in mind, uh, but we also recognize that uh, businesses have to be reopened. We want people to get back to work, and that's really, really important to our uh, community. I want to bring in another question here from Stephanie, who is asking about any thoughts about loosening inter-island travel restrictions. Uh, your thoughts on that, if there was any discussion happening with the mayors and the other counties about any sort of loosening on what is currently in place and the required testing that's needed for inter-island travel. Yeah, Brian, we do uh, have um, uh, meetings and talking about that. Uh, we are definitely looking at um, relaxing inter-island travel. Uh, you know, Mayor Victorino had specifically asked about allowing travel between Hawaii Island and uh, Maui County, for example. Uh, as we know, the virus um, prevalence is uh, similar um, uh, between those communities. And we are definitely working on allowing travel between Hawaii Island and uh, more specifically Maui County. So uh, Maui, uh, Molokai and Lanai. Um, you know, we continue to talk with uh, the other counties about um, appropriate changes. You know, we are seeing the virus counts come down uh, across the state, and we definitely would want to, um, you know, lift the inter-island travel as quickly as we can. There are a number of questions here about the eviction ban um, and the, the moratorium on evictions. Do you anticipate extending that any further? Uh, and, and what do you say to landlords who are not getting paid right now and the, and the concerns that they have because they have to pay mortgages and whatnot? On the other side, obviously, you have people who can't afford to pay rent, and we definitely don't want to increase our homeless population. So so what 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 is the status of that? Well, clearly, you know, there's $200 million that is in the, this um, uh, relief package that was passed in December, and we're working really hard to get that out um, and to the landlords uh, as quickly as we can. We haven't actually received the money yet at this point, but as soon as we do, we are uh, working with, uh, again, private sector partners uh, to be able to get uh, those funds uh, out to the community as quickly as possible. I just would want to ask the landlords uh, to, I know that it's difficult, you know, they have mortgages to be paid as well. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be relief uh, and we, we're committed to getting it to them as quickly as possible. Uh, we, we all know that um, having people evicted um, and becoming homeless at this point in time really um, would not be a good outcome for our community in general. Uh, and so I do want to express my appreciation to the landlords who have been patient and have been uh, working with most of their tenants uh, up until this point in time. And uh, there is um, additional help along uh, on the way and just ask them to be uh, patient if they can. Want to switch gears here and give you an opportunity to speak about uh, uh, something that has happened in terms of your uh, appointment of the uh, to the seat of Kaika Haley, who of course was appointed, uh, who won the election and is now in uh, Congress. But you have appointed uh, Laura Acasio to that seat, and there has been uh, some talk about her and her opinions of you. You know, at one point she signed a petition calling for your impeachment, uh, and yet you have 
put her into the position to fill Kai Kahele's seat in the Hawaii State Senate. Just wanted to give you an opportunity to respond on uh, that appointment and what you saw in her to, to give her this uh, appointment. Cer certainly, I, I know, um, Ryan, you know, people ask me, was, um, was I aware? And yes, I, I was aware that she had made some of those statements. But, you know, Ryan, when I am looking at making these appointments, I really am trying to um, put on the community hat and think about who would best serve that community in that position. You know, I had a, a real good conversation with uh, Senator now Senator Ocasio, and I know that she doesn't agree with everything uh, on every position that I have. But I did feel that she was very connected to the community. She was very active. Uh, she's a teacher, and so she's familiar with the students. Um, and, you know, she was very community-minded. She had, um, uh, as part of her position in the Democratic Party, had organized community forums. She is very open uh, and tries to make uh, thoughtful decisions on her personal uh, positions, uh, you know, recognizing that some of these um, um, issues are very controversial and, uh, and you know, are very difficult to um, find compromises that work. And so I was impressed with that. Um, and, you know, clearly uh, she wasn't going to be my representative. She was going to be the senator for the first district on Hawaii Island. And I felt that of all the candidates that um, were put placed before me, she would have the best interest of, um, of the first district on Hawaii Island. I know our time is running out and you address this at the top, but we are just getting flooded this morning with these unemployment questions. So for those who did join late um, and, you know, there's a lot of people reading, just reading these comments flooding in that are very frustrated by the system. They say they simply cannot wait any longer to get these benefits. We know that we're working on old technology and, and you know, um, the director is working as fast as she can. But what do you say to these people who are really frustrated and, and are having a hard time paying their bills? You know, I um, am sorry that that's what the current situation is. You know, I speak with uh, Anne a lot. She really understands and she is trying to get um, uh, people uh, approved as quickly as she can. And it is frustrating for uh, everyone uh, to not be able to uh, deliver benefits uh, to the community um, that uh, they should be entitled to. And so, um, you know, I'll get you um, an update on when we expect those um, checks to be able to be processed um, when we get off. Uh, but I just um, uh, ask people to um, be patient and know that we are working as hard as we can to uh, get the benefits to that to them as quickly as we can. And we will actually be speaking to the director next month as well. So for those of you who are asking those questions, uh, she's been very gracious in taking all these questions on and, and addressing them. So we will be speaking to her in February. Before we go, Governor, we know that this has been a, a rough week for Hawaii Island. They lost former Mayor Billy Kino. I wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, you know, I remember shortly after one of the first things that you did when you got into office and sworn into office was we took that trip to Hawaii Island because at the time there was that lava flow that was heading towards Pahoa and we were able to see Billy Kinoy in action uh, and that was your first official trip as governor. Wanted to get your thoughts about Billy Kinoy and, and uh, as we kind of close things out here as we look back at, at his career and his time in office. Yeah, th thanks. You know, Don and I really want to send our best wishes to the Kinoy family. Um, you know, Billy was just uh, a terrific leader a uh, big heart, and I think most importantly, he had a way of communicating uh, that really touched uh, so many, um, not only on Hawaii Island, but all across the state. He uh, definitely will be somebody who will be um, missed greatly. And, um, you know, I think that uh, all of us, uh, on behalf of the people of Hawaii, we do want to express our sympathies and condolences to the family. Okay, thank you so much, Governor David Ige, for rounding out your week with us. We truly appreciate all the time you took with us, and we wish you a great weekend. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.
Whether you hear from Governor David Ige, uh, giving us an update on where we're at on a number of issues, uh, including the state's response to COVID-19. He talked about the vaccines and the rollout, obviously some frustration on his end in terms of the availability of vaccines being distributed to the states and to here in Hawaii. He's saying that we have the capacity to distribute 50,000 of these vaccines a week. We just don't have those types of vaccines here on island. And so the push continues uh, and the Biden administration has expressed that they will be sending out more to the states and they hope that this effort will continue to ramp up over time, but saying the infrastructure is there, we're just waiting for the vaccines. Yeah, he was saying he doesn't want the FEMA help in terms of setting up clinics that they've been offering to some of the states. That's not our issue. Our issue, as you said, is getting the actual shots. And we know that so many of you uh, have been writing these unemployment questions. We're reading the comments as they come in. We understand your frustration. Uh, we do have uh, Mrs. Stockwheel on in, uh, in a couple of weeks. And so we invite you to pose your questions directly to her. Uh, I think that at every level, everyone is frustrated. Uh, the governor clearly saying that they're working as fast as they can and asking folks to be patient. And a lot of you are saying that you're done with being patient and that is also understandable. So uh, it's a very, very difficult issue. Uh, the other thing that he did mention that is encouraging is that there is quite a bit of money out there for rental relief. They haven't actually received that from the federal government. This is from the second CARES Act, but there is a good amount of money available for that. And unlike last time, uh, there were some issues with some landlords uh, not wanting to take direct payments from these agencies. They will allow, in some cases, for the renter to get the money and then give it to the landlord, which could uh, get more people the benefits they need. And of course, the biggest difference uh, that we will see with this next round of funding and support from federal government is that it is specifically all allocated to programs and needs, whereas uh, the first time it was basically a lump sum of money that went to the states and to these cities to decide of how they wanted to distribute it. And that's when we saw the restaurant card program. That's where we saw these rental relief programs. And now these uh, funds basically have an assignment and allotment of what money is going to what specific department and what need. And so the flexibility is somewhat limited, but uh, recognizing that there are uh, still ways in which the federal government and this second wave of CARES Act funding will be able to help people, including in this area. He did say that they are still in talks about perhaps loosening up restrictions on inter island travel. Uh, and he held firm on his position on the legalization of marijuana, saying that he really, that's not something that he wants to jump ahead of the federal government on. He's really asking Congress on the national level to, to deal with that issue rather than do it state by state because there are concerns that given where Hawaii is, that we are isolated and that it would be uh, still a federal crime, uh, that there would be a lot of concerns there. So it doesn't sound like he's changing his position on that, although there are a number of lawmakers who want to introduce legislation to make recreational marijuana um, legal here in Hawaii. And it also looks like the position on the Safe Travels Program and those who have received the vaccine, uh, that probably will not change for some time until the CDC provides further guidance on the impact of the vaccine and on travel. And so until the CDC uh, provides any sort of recommendation or an opinion on the vaccine and travel, it looks like the safe travel program and the way that it is set up for people coming into the state will remain as is. And even if you have a vaccine, you will still need to get that test until the CDC provides further direction. Yeah, someone who's been pushing for that change is actually Lieutenant Governor Josh Green. Uh, he also heads up the vaccine coordination program here in our state. He's going to be joining us on Monday, so make sure to tune in for that at 1030. We'll have Dr. Libby Char on on Wednesday. Uh, to talk about vaccine distribution and some of the concerns you may have. There was an interesting article in the paper yesterday that said about half of Hawaii residents who were surveyed said they weren't necessarily wanting to get the vaccine. We have talked with a number of experts that say we have to get to 70% or more um, people being inoculated for this to actually work. So how do they get over that threshold? Uh, we'll be talking to Dr. Char about that. And then Ryan, on Friday, we're sort of switching gears off COVID for a minute. Yeah, we're, again, this is Spotlight Hawaii. Obviously, the spotlight is on COVID, and so there's a lot of issues regarding that impacting our community. Another issue or another topic that is drawing a lot of discussion is the future of Aloha Stadium, what that's going to look like. And now that the legislature is in session, how they are going to plan to move that project forward. We're going to be talking to the two area lawmakers, uh, Senator Glenn Wakai and Representative Aaron Johansson, who will be speaking about their efforts in their community and how they plan to move forward with Aloha Stadium and what that new development will look like in, uh, in the future. 
So thank you all for being here. We know a number of you are frustrated uh, with an unemployment issue. Again, we are going to be having the director on in the coming weeks, and we will let you know uh, on that date when we get a little bit closer. But until then, we wish you a great weekend. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of your questions and comments. We do read all of them, even the ones that are a little critical <laughs> of us. <laughs> we enjoy those as well. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you right back here on Monday. Aloha.